<laughs> okay, folks, it's 102. Let me turn on record. Uh, folks always use the chat feature to ask questions or raise your hand. Um, we'll, we'll try to accommodate your questions as we're able. And we are recording. Okay, three, two, one. All right, SMB Nation, thanks for joining us today. Uh, it's a it's an open conversation that we had the re basically a recreation of a conversation we had at the MSP Rescue in Princeton in late July. Um, the title is "You Can't Go It Alone: Finding Your Trusted Cybersecurity Community." I'm joined by uh, Frank Gurney and Paul Dobbins. Um, my name is Harry Brelsford. I'm the founder of SMB Nation, doing it all day, every day. Frank, over to you. We've known each other 20. It's embarrassing. We've known yeah, each other two yeah, decades. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about embarrassing. Of course, you know, the gray hair and you got it on the yeah. sides there. You don't have the beard like Paul and I do. But um, yeah, known each other a long time, both back in the SMB Nation days, uh, you know, all the fun stuff we used to do back then with uh, SBS server and all these these kind of things. But um uh, yeah, go way back. Um, my name is Frank Gurney. I am the channel director of Se uh, Security Studio. Uh, we are a risk management platform and uh, just been in the in the industry a long time. So uh, from having been with an MSP and helping to kind of create and grow managed services over time, uh, web marketing, uh, Came out of telecommunications, so the whole nine yards. But uh, yeah, that's a little bit of my background. And uh, yeah, Paul, how about yourself? Yes, uh, thanks, Paul Dobbins. I'm I'm the newbie to the group here. I, I've met these gentlemen in the last uh, year or so. Uh, I'm uh, with Ostra Cybersecurity. I'm the chief growth chief growth officer, and uh, I'm based out of Florida. But uh, Ostra is based in Minnesota, so that makes for some interesting travel in the winter. Um, uh, yeah, so we're we're kind of from all over the country, uh, Texas, California, and and, uh, and Florida represented here. Uh, but my background is really primarily in sales and marketing. Uh, I've been in, in technology for pretty much my entire career. Um, uh, so I've worked with uh, a lot of different uh, startups, uh, major corporations as well. Um, and uh, so, yeah, excited to, to join you guys once again. Uh, I was introduced via um, our partnership with Security Studio and also um, with MSP Rescue uh, with Harry. So uh, pleasure to be with you guys today. Thanks for having me. Cool, let's jump right into it. So folks, the idea was this, let's just have an open conversation, zero PowerPoints. Um, and that's kind of my new thing. Um, don't, you know, tw 24, don't know if I'll even create a PowerPoint slide, but we wanted to celebrate Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Uh, we have a couple days left. And um, next week's a dud because it's in the month and we know we wouldn't get your attention within the month. So we wanted to pop it this week, midweek. And uh, I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, uh, Frank, we'll start with you. There's three main questions today, folks. Raise your hand or use the chat to ask questions. And the first one is uh, why the channel is broken and why MSPs are paying the price. Frank, go first. Yeah, so I mean, it, you know, it's a big question, right? But the the thing right now is, and you, you guys have both been at a number of events and and different things, and we're seeing that cybersecurity is everywhere. And you know, the managed service provider today, um, this entire thing looks a lot like it did 15, 20 years ago, right, Harry? When we saw this change going from IT break fix companies yeah. to manage <laughs> services, right? And and it, everything was managed services at that point, and nobody knew how to do it. There was a ton of misinformation as far as how to do it, and what to do, and really in our industry, what's what's broken right now that I see is that it's very similar in that sense that nobody really knows how to do this cybersecurity stuff. Um, it's everywhere, and everybody's throwing their solution at you, right? <laughs> And it's everyone, you know, every shiny object that you can see is there to, to to be had. But how do you pull all this together? What do you do? How do you bring it together? And what does it mean for the MSP that is doing it? And, you know, 
when I talk about miscommunication, I mean, one of the biggest things is people out there saying, you're an MSP today, you need to be an MSSP. It's just not going to happen for most MSPs. Yeah. The reality is an MSSP, and Paul, you can probably speak to this pretty well, you know, you're going to build out a SOC, you're going to build out a SIM, you're going you're, you're to spend millions of bucks doing that um, in order to be, you know, what is truly an MSSP. So, um, you know, here at Cer Security Studio, we recognize that that there's something in between. There's a middle ground, and um, we call it MCSP, which is Managed Cybersecurity Service Provider. And that differentiates you from a traditional MSP. It's the next step in the evolution. And think of it as that in between an MSSP and an MSP. So I think miscommunication is one of the biggest things that we find right now in the broken industry. And, and Paul, maybe you can speak to that whole MSSP thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of along those those same lines. I think the the um, for folks who have heard heard me uh, speak in the last year or two, uh, you've probably heard heard the phrase where there's mystery, there's margin. And that phrase was one that really stuck with me, and and that was one that was used by uh, a particular uh, vendor in speaking to MSPs along those those same lines encouraging them to become more of an MSSP. And essentially the message was, you're basically an MSSP and truly kind of misleading them down, down that road. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I, I'm, I'm probably skipping a little bit into, into the second question, but, you know, when, when you think about like how to how to find the right cybersecurity partners and and who's going to be the right the right partner for that, it's it's really the ones that are that are being honest and forthright and and, and you know one of the things that that I love about Security Studio is you know every time that we go to these ASCII events, one of the one of the key things that you guys talk about is there is no easy button. You 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 still have to put in the work. So anytime that you, I guess I'll cover question three too. Any anytime that you get someone that's saying, like we have the the all in one solution and this is this is going to be all you need to to secure everything, um, and this is going to fix all of your problems. Um, don't walk, run away. Like right. you want you want uh, a partner that's going to be honest and forthright with you. And they're not going to promise you the world. They're going to be honest, and they're going to say, "Look, here's what we can offer you." But th there's still going to be work involved. There is no <laughs> Staples easy button here. Yeah. Um, so, but what really bothered me about the the mis where there's mystery, there's margin is that truly indicates that we shouldn't be transparent. And yeah. at the end of the day, that's just not the right direction, especially when we're talking about cybersecurity. Like yeah. that is where we need to be the most transparent. Yeah, I'll I'll add a couple of thoughts. Um, one is uh, I this morning I got up uh, well got up and had an email from uh, some of you may know Jeffrey Schwartz, longtime writer for Redmond Channel Partner Magazine, most recently Channel Futures. He was at a Lenovo AI tech conference in downtown uh, Austin, Texas. And he said, hey, you know, do you want to come down for breakfast and sit in on a couple of speeches? And Frank, back to your point, um, the confusion, the hype, it's it's all that. It's all that with AI, right? Here, yeah. here, 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 here we go again. So <laughs> I sat in on three speeches and then I had to dart home to host this webinar. But, you know, this isn't my first rodeo. The other thing, um, the question on the table is why the channel is broken and why MSPs are paying the price. Um, I'll, I'll give you a, uh, another uh, quick take, um, then we'll move on. But a lot of you know Al Arper at CyberGuard365. Um, if you're going to IT Nation in a couple of weeks, he has a booth there, super good guy. Had a good talk with him the other day, and I don't think he'd mind uh, me sharing, but there's some... Um, in the fourth quarter here in uh, 23, there's some supply chain weakness, there's softness. And he said it goes like this, that 
you know, the SMB customers are seeing softness, which means it goes to the MSP, right? That, you know, we either got to cut back or we got to do this or we got to do that. And then it goes to the vendor because the MSP is not ordering as much consumption. Um, and so I equate it to the, you know, the, the bird ate the spider and the cat ate the bird. Um, and so that's, uh, in my opinion, right here, right now, why the channel is quote unquote broken. Now, now that said, all this stuff will normalize over time, right? I mean, you know, this, you know, don't, don't go sell short. Um, but with that said, let's move on. We have uh, the second question, tips for finding the right cybersecurity partners. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, research, obviously, right? I mean, doing your research, talking to people, it's always been this way in our industry, you know, um, taking the advice of your peers, right? What do you what are you guys using? What are what are we doing? The other thing is, you know, to not get caught up in the hype, right? I mean, the idea of jumping into anything is is not the way to do it. Right now, a ton and it goes back to misinformation. There's a ton of misinformation around compliance <laughs> and that you know, everything is compliance and you got to be doing compliance for your customers. Well, compliance is very specific to certain industries, certain, you know, types of companies and that sort of thing. Now, what I would say is that, you know, and, and I'm in this business, but a risk assessment is no different than a network assessment in the sense of it should be the starting place of any cyber engagement. So as long as you're doing an assessment, a risk assessment initially, you're gonna find out the things that you need to be doing for your customers. And you can put those pieces in place, you know, endpoint protection, it's just, you know, think that's something you have to be doing for every customer. So every customer should have a risk assessment. Every customer should have endpoint protection, doesn't matter. But do they need further compliance? Maybe not, right? So, you know, understanding that and, and getting in front of it and doing your research is the biggest thing. And Paul, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think um, also uh, when it comes to uh, the research aspect, you know, when asking when asking questions of, about that, um, making sure that they're able to understand uh, understand their lane. A lot of a lot of companies are trying to be everything to everyone, <laughs> uh, and um, you know I, I will say there's there's a a, a piece of a, a piece of the the cybersecurity industry where you know you've seen the charts with, with how many cybersecurity companies are out there, and and it fills up a, uh, an eight and a half by eleven, and they're like itty bitty logos and it's completely full right um <laughs> yeah, the but, logo but, chart <laughs> yeah and it's and it's very and, and it's a very fractured uh and siloed industry um but the nice part is that that there are uh experts in various uh capacities uh within those um those different uh um uh expertises and uh, knowing, you know, knowing, knowing that and knowing who the experts are, um, and making sure that you're asking, uh, asking those questions, uh, asking your peers, um, and then understanding that, uh, you know, the right partner is really those who are collaborative in nature, who are also partnering with others, because I think, you know, I, I say this often, you know, we keep spending more and more. I mean, a, a ton of money uh, on cybersecurity, and we just keep getting our asses kicked. And why is that? Like, we have to start considering, like, why do we keep spending all of this time, energy, and resources, and we we just keep getting our teeth kicked in? Um, we have to start working more collaboratively as an industry. Um, like when, when we have, when we have attacks, you'll notice that certain companies will go on the offensive and rather than work, work together to work for the good of all companies and work for, um, it, you know, work to make sure that things are being addressed appropriately, um, you'll see companies' true colors come through. 
whether they are taking advantage and trying to to completely obliterate companies that um, that happen to be a target. Uh, you know, anyone can be a target. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, I think that's an important thing to look at is when things when things are tough, when bad things happen uh, in cybersecurity, look at how companies respond. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul, I might add on there, um, it's 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 not it's an analogy and it's not the strongest analogy, but I like your idea about collaboration. So here, here, here I'm going to give it my best shot. About a month ago, I went to a well-respected uh, intellectual academic conference here in Austin called the Texas Tribune Festival, nonpartisan media outlet. So they they had both sides. They had both sides of the aisle. And, and I went to those panels. Right. And, uh, you know, and kept with with open eyes. And what I found um, coming out of that uh, three day was, you know, at, at the end of the day, we're going to solve problems by, you know, meeting in the middle, um, sitting down at a table. Some of the writings from early Microsoft SBS, we had this whole thing about the fair zone. <laughs> so it's a time tested business paradigm. But that's that's how we solve problems, folks. Um, you, you know, you just you, you can't be too far. Again, we're not getting political because it, it can be the same in business. You, you just can't be too far off to the side. It's uh, it's it's going to happen in the middle, especially if you want a long term relationship. Um, if you came in late, uh, please use the chat feature um, or raise your hand if you'd like to ask questions. I think I can unmute you. Um, so I can always count on Ken Dwight in Houston at some point to raise his hand. And Ken, I look forward to our one-on-one -on -one conversation coming up soon. Um, the third question and, and, and final question, again, we wanted to stay targeted, how to ask the right questions and identify red flags. Paul, we'll start with you this time. Sure. Well, I think it, it kind of blends into um, finding the right cybersecurity partners as well. Um, and it's really, uh, you know, finding out what they truly stand for. Um, and uh, I think, you know, I think references are references are outstanding, but also, um, you know, I like to, I have a couple examples of, um, you know, finding out what, what these partners are, are truly about. Um, but I, you know, from a from a red flag uh, perspective, that's that's the favorite part of this question. Uh, I kind of mentioned it earlier. Um, guarantees, a hundred a hundred percent security, all in one solutions. You know, I mentioned earlier. Watch what watch what companies do and say after after significant events in cybersecurity. Um, I, I can't tell you how many people I talked to afterwards that said, you know what, if we were there, we would have stopped that. You know what? Okay. Let's 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 be honest. <laughs> right. Okay, let me. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and then after asking a couple of questions, we were able to you know, talk through that, and they were able to understand. Mm, not really. So, um, but in, in reality, I, I want to give a couple examples, and I want to give a little bit of praise to a couple of our partners. One, um, I already talked about Security Studio. Uh, you know, putting in the work, but really because they're they're education based. Um, finding out if they have the same values as as you do, asking those questions, making sure that they have the same values as you do. I think that's the most important thing. Um, that's how we base our partnerships. Um, FR Secure is a sister company of Security Studio. Um, they they talk about mission before money. Now anyone can say that, but when the founder and CEO of the company tells their entire team, and I'm Pretty sure this actually happened. Yeah. If you yeah. sell something they don't need, I will run you over with my truck. <laughs> uh, then you yep, know, yep. and it I've heard happen. that from yeah, <laughs> that, and I've heard that for I didn't hear it firsthand, but I've heard it from enough people that I'm pretty sure. Well, not the run over part. Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we have another partner um, that we started working with, uh, Hook Security. Oh yeah, um, and they, yeah, and they have, yeah, they have a they have a little bit different uh, approach from uh, security education. They go from a psychological perspective, um, but they they definitely have a holistic approach. We like how they approach uh, the education aspect, 
their startup. Um, we like the fact that they're all basically from education and from startups. Um, and, and they definitely have the same approach as we do and uh, the same fundamental values. And so in a nutshell, uh, I think asking the right questions um, from a value perspective is, is one of the most important things. And Paul, let me just interject. Uh, folks, Hook Security, they're on my uh, list. They have a booth at IT Nation in about two weeks in Orlando. And again, it's, I'll just leave IT Nation. I'll just leave it at that. Frank, <laughs> over to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of what Paul said, right? Um, the the thing that I think truly uh, when you're when you're looking at vendors and partners and partnerships is, you know, who's coming at it from my perspective and seeing that from the MSP, right? So who understands my business as an MSP? Who who knows what's next for me and is looking out for my best interests and not just their, you know, bottom line pockets? Um, and truly, that's every day for, you know, for me, uh, I, I, I've been in that seat that you guys are, I've sold managed services, I've done it all. So I, I understand the, you know, the, 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 how tough it is, right, to, to do this, and especially with something new. And, you know, having made that transition once, you know, from a certain type of company to another, got a nice good 10, 10, 15 year run here as a managed service provider. And now, you know, it's changing and evolving and, and that's always tough. Change is tough, right? So if your vendor can understand that what you're going through and how to help your business, that's going to make a huge difference. And, you know, you know, what's great is we see and when we go out on the road, we see a lot of familiar faces that we've known that's been in the channel for a long time and with different companies. And these guys, you know, when you see those familiar faces, you know that they know what you've been through and where you've come from and where you're going. Um, and so, you know, I just say that just anybody who has an understanding of your business is going to be a better partner for you, um, you know, at the end of the day. If they come from, you know, an enterprise solution can be be great, but do they understand the MSP? You know, maybe not, right? Um, and so you really have to look at those things when you're when you're really vetting um, your partnerships. And, and those are the types of questions to ask is like, you know, how do you help us as an MSP start this business, start doing this? Um, and, you know, we've we've done a lot of things with our partner program to help our MSPs get started. Um, and, um, you know, that's something that we continue to to work towards providing sales enablement tools and and marketing campaigns and web pages and all of this kind of stuff for you to be able to use in your business and don't have to come up with from scratch. Those are all really important pieces. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, from that perspective, it's like anyone that you can look at and ask those types of questions to and vet from that perspective is going to be a better partner for you. Excellent. Hey, Laura DiDio, I saw your question in chat, but I've elevated you if you uh, are comfortable turning on your microphone and would like to ask your question and we can kind of go asynchronous. Um, if not, uh, Laura, there she is. Laura, how you doing? I'm doing well, Harry. I'm doing well. I thought it was about time I joined one of your conferences. So I've been, as you know, covering security for a long time, going back to my days at Network World in the late 80s, and I'm still only 29. <laughs> but one of the things that I've seen in covering security, particularly within the SMB space, is that the technology has advanced, but the mindset of many users, especially in the SMB segment, is still stuck in the 90s. Many of them feel, hey, it's not going to happen to my business. I'm flying below the radar. If it ain't broke, <laughs> don't fix it. Mm -hmm. I can't afford it. There are so many solutions out there. Who do I know to trust? Whom do I know to trust? And the best one of all is, um, you know, security is is just too tough. You know, it's just it's just too tough. So how do you how do you change that? Because clearly everyone needs security. And I hear time and time again from consultants and MSPs that many of many, not all, of the SMBs just don't get it. And, you know, adopt the ostrich approach, head in yeah. the sand. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I think I have a good, um, a good, you know, s speak to that, um, Laura, and an amazing, amazing um, insight. You're a hundred percent right. And and as the managed service providers evolved, you know, managed service providers came in and what did they say? They said, "We're going to." Be your IT outsourced IT company. We're going to handle it all for you. You don't have to worry about technology anymore. We've got you covered, right? And that's been fantastic, and it did them really well, and everybody got MRR, and that was perfect. But now as cyber has changed and these breaches are happening and all this stuff, and all of these pieces of the puzzle have not been implemented into these SMB environments, there's a problem. And the problem is that the customer thinks they're doing it. They think the MSP is handling this for them. So whenever a new breach comes up and the new newest news story, they go, I'm not worried because XYZ MSP has me covered, right? So the, the, the idea here is, and this is where I was going back to, it all starts with a risk assessment. Any managed service provider can now go back to their customer in a QBR, which they're supposed to be doing, <laughs> which probably, you know, was one of those things, but hey, schedule a QBR, go out and do a risk assessment for your customer, provide them a score of how they're doing from a cyber perspective. And all you have to say to that customer at this point is, we wanted to come in and do this risk assessment for you because we are concerned about breaches and things happening. This isn't something we've covered in the past. However, you know what's great? If you move up to our next level of our solution, we will cover those things for you. Two things happen in that. One, you either added more revenue to your business by just doing that simple task and talking to them about cybersecurity. The second thing, you informed them that this is an issue and something you don't cover. And if they say no, you also put a paper in front of them that says, I just need you to sign this saying we're not responsible if a breach occurs. And two things will happen there. They'll either sign it or they won't sign it. They'll say they want to, their lawyers to look at it, or they'll second, they'll think about it and say, you know what, maybe we should go with your better solution, right? Yep. So it's a win-win for the MSP to do that in that fashion, because now they're engaging with that customer. They're letting them know it's not something covered, and it is something that they can. Cool. Hey, we have time. Uh, oh, Christy's saying that it's already been covered. Christy uh, followed up with Laura. Let me just read it. Um, folks, we have time for one more question. I'm happy to elevate you. Uh, Christy said that, uh, that uh, oh, we have someone coming in. Okay, Mike. Um, to further Laura's question, how do you help new clients overcome the reality they have been doing zero for security? And when you amp that up, there is a cost. Gentlemen, quickly. Yeah, Paul, you want to hit it? I can hit it as well, either way. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, no, I think. Um, well, I think I, I think uh, I think Frank kind of kind of touched on that. Um, is making sure that they that they have that initial visibility. So you have to level set on where they currently stand, mm -hmm. um, and you have to have that initial um, reality check. Um, and and then it's making sure that uh, you can get through. Um, you know, I think, Laura, you, you mentioned it a little bit. There's there's so much out there. Um, we like to call it cyber jargon, uh, is making sure that you're able to simplify that. Um, and I'll be honest with you, uh, you know, full transparency. One of the things that we struggled with is not just from an from an SMB standpoint, but even from an MSP standpoint with cybersecurity. Um, offering cybersecurity in a different way as we do. Um, where we are essentially an outsourced cybersecurity uh, team for MSPs um, has been something that that uh, that we are just gaining ground on because MSPs have been used to offering siloed solutions for 20 years. You know, you mentioned the 90s. It's hard to believe that was 24 years ago, right? Um, but it's not the 90s anymore, right? Yeah. And yeah it's time to start rethinking about how we're delivering solutions so that MSPs can stick to what they're doing outstanding because, you know, 85% uh, of, of small businesses that are out there are reconsidering their MSP right now right. because you guys are, you know, they are uh, overwhelmed. I mean, 
there there is a shortage of of uh, of people out there. Uh, I like to say there, it's not a tools problem. It's not a technology problem. Right now, cybersecurity is a people problem, and that's yeah. that's honestly what we're trying to solve. Um, and that's quite honestly been been our biggest challenge. Full transparency. So cool. Hey, I have time for one more question, and I think it's being typed. Um, let's see, Lyle. Da, da, da. Well, I'll happy to. I'll, I'll tell you what. In the spirit of uh, time, Lyle, I'm going to read your question. Forgive me. It's from Secure IT Systems. If you focus on mitigating risk, you will look back to the right cyber solution. High level thoughts on that, and then I'll close with a little funny story about Laura DiDio. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I Lyle hit the, the nail on the head, really, and this is what we're trying to do with Security Studio. I create, you know, we we really created a unlimited way to do risk assessments for MSPs, so they can go in, literally do a lightweight risk assessment, and let the client understand what their risk is, right? And so you can come in, like I said, at that QBR for your existing customers and for any new potential customers, you use that as a tool to get in the door. The second part to that would be, it's it's also a sales issue, right? Everybody gets a new thing, a new shiny toy, and you wanna sell it. Look, you're not gonna sell your customer on endpoint protection or SOC or SIM or any of these things. That is not the thing to do. What you do is you do what you did in managed services. You go in and you say, look, we can help you with this thing, cybersecurity thing. You don't have to worry about the ins, the outs, the technology, what's in the, built into it. You build out your stack the way you want. You use solutions like Ostra to, that covers the majority of those or like Security Studio to get in the door. And then you let them know what your solution is, not the thing that you need to sell them. And so that's the biggest thing I would say that we all fail in typically in the MSP world is we go and we try to sell the technology or we try to sell and the I'll, I want to I want to say one quick thing because I've seen a lot of these risk assessments and a lot of these risk assessments are extremely complex. They're way too long. They're um, you know, it puts you to sleep, et cetera. The thing that I really like about what what you guys have done is you've made it relative to what people already know. People know what their credit score is, and so you have related it to the credit score. Yeah, I, so I like you, that. Yeah, I, I love that because as I as I looked at it, because I've seen a ton of them, as I looked at it, I was uh, it was very easy for me to go in and look at a company's uh, scores and see exactly what exactly what needed to be changed. Um, so, and and it's a good thing because you know. Um, we're always working on our own personal credit, always. Like I'm always looking at how can I get to be the highest score that I can? And every time I get a loan or something and it drops me down, how do I work to get it back up? In security, it's the same way. There's always a new vulnerability. There's always a new hack. So that's gonna knock you down some, but you're always working to get back up and get yourself in the best position possible. So yeah, it does It does make a lot when, of sense. And when you think about it, credit is just risk. That's what right? it is. It is. And that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> Gentlemen, we, we will exactly. reconvene. Yeah, we'll reconvene next year. Um, I appreciate your time today. Laura, are you still live? Laura, I want to have a little fun with you as we uh, yes. we go out. Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. So so I want to have fun with you. You still doing the horses? Yes. Okay, yes. cool. Well, I have an update for you, and boy, you're going to regret this, but my son and his wife have made their home in Newton um, outside Boston. So I get up there, you know, three, four times a year. So you're you're gonna regret that. I uh I I, I know where to find you. <laughs> Twenty five miles away from west of Newton. <laughs> cool. Hey, good to see your name. And Laura, what was your claim to fame? I'm gonna say Gartner. I know I got it wrong. Well, oh, it was Yankee. You were Yankee group. Well, no, I was Giga, which became Forrester. I was Yankee. Yeah. I was Strategy Analytics. I was um. Let's see, 451, which got bought by, I can't even recall all the M&As. Every, <laughs> every place I was going gets acquired, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of them. And, of course, Network World, Computer World, some PC Week, Land Oh, Times. yeah. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Oh, Land, yeah. We're really going back, you know? Yeah. Laura, we'll a lot have of to connect. Don't exist it sounds anymore. like 
that sounds like quite quite a uh, quite a journey. I'll I'll uh, I'll reach out to you. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, please, please do. I would like to pick this up, and I would like to um, maybe write an article on you guys um, for my web page and a couple of others that I write for because. Uh, I also do a lot of security surveys and here a lot of first person accounts. And I think, Paul, what you said is exactly the right thing. When you talk about risk and how to get through to these people and Frank, you talked about um, going in and with the credit scores, et cetera. You have to start at the first brick on the yellow brick road and yeah. any company, I don't care <laughs> what the size, yep. that is not doing vulnerability testing at least once a year, their risk is off the chart. Cool. Well, hey, Laura, Laura, kick me and eat. Let's, let's reconnect. Uh, Harry B at smbnation.com. Very simple. Harry B at SMB Nation. Kick it. And I'll connect you with uh, Frank and Paul and uh, also get on your calendar for uh, my next visit. Um, folks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. You know, it's uh, that's we, we took your time and, and, and hopefully thank you, you all for the questions. We, we love the interaction. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, nice. yeah and can, can we get a shout out to uh, where they can find us, Harry? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll end on that. Go ahead. Yeah, Paul, go for it. Yeah, uh, you can reach me at paul.dobbins at ostra.net, O-S-T-R-A dot N-E-T. Yeah, and uh, so F Gurney, G-U-R-N-E-E -E, at securitystudio.com. So Frank Gurney, and uh, yeah, just check us out. And folks, as always, you get a follow-up email from me, and also yeah, you, you guys know you guys know Harry. He, he can always get yeah, he, yeah, he can get a hold of us. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows Laura, Harry. Super good to see you again, Laura. Everybody have a great day. Enjoy Halloween. I'm going to go out to a little adult Halloween party. Now, not naughty. Nice. Nice. No, Saturday not. night in Austin. <laughs> I don't know. Does, do those two things go together? Saturday night, Austin, and nice? I don't know. Sounds naughty to me. Okay. Take care. Thank you very much, everybody. Goodbye. Yeah, everyone. Thanks. Okay,